Welcome back, everyone, to Nanolins of Dawn. Our main host, Dominic, or Shadow Pure, and we have another exhibition match. This time between Dying Throned and Golda. I should, I should double check. Ah, no. Alright, I can't put the attrition display there. I'd like to, but the attrition display does not line up always with the spectator panels. Probably should look at the code for that just to make sure that they do, because I would really like to have it just in the corner there, like I had last game. Because it just nicely takes up less space, and there's no redundant naming. But alas, that is not an option. Well, anyway, let's get to the game. So Dime Freund going for the Shieldbound Factory, while Golda goes for the Heavy Tank Factory. Which is an interesting choice, because, like I said, this map has some odd matchups. The one thing with vehicles is that it isn't the best map for vehicles, just because of the way that the pathfinding tends to work. Like, because of these little hills here, which are largely bot pathable. You know, I see some reds, but not enough per like, purple is unblo is unpathable, so there's still room for a bot to go up through here. Vehicles don't have that luxury. Oops. Vehicles are pretty much stuck on the flats. They do manage to get over to the southwest, but still, I'm pretty sure there's actually some paths there that are in unpathable to vehicles. And yeah, pretty much all these little hill sections. So there's ways of getting around, but it's far more limited. So I'm curious that Gold is going for that. At the same time, though, they could just be thinking push up from the new tanks, like the Kodachi's doing their jobs. Because the new Kodachi is... It's like a lot more frequent fire, I believe, but... No, it's not more frequent fire. It's less frequent fire. I'm trying to remember what they did, because there was there were a lot of changes to the Kodachi recently, and it slipped in my mind that they are exactly. At any rate, though, Golda is getting the fast expansions going. Dying Front, on the other hand, very quickly getting thugs up. Are they going for... They're not going for Commander Rush, are they? No, just early Thug Law Ball. Not really going for the Bandits early on. I mean, they had the one Bandit, and they managed to... Did they even manage to do anything with it? No, clearly not much. I mean, probably managed to see the... Nope, nothing. Yeah, they have no idea what's going on. Still, the Thug's not a bad idea. Well, okay, actually, never mind. <laughs> What am I saying? No, fire goes through shield. Of course. No, thugs aren't a great idea, actually. Yeah, Dying Throne expanding that much more slower than God. I mean, or that much more slowly than Golda. And that's... That's going to be a bit of a problem. I mean, with the Kodachi coming in here and largely containing everything that Dying Throne's made, I don't really see this as being an easy way of getting Dying Throne to actually get territory, but they managed. With the Rogue in tow, they've been able to get rid of the Kodachi. Golda coming in there with a couple welders, probably... Nah, just pure welder. Golda's just entirely worried about getting all the expansions. And to be fair, that makes sense. With heavy tanks, you just have, you just need the welders. They have a gun of their own. And Golda's taking full advantage of that, too. Dying Freund managing to finally expand a little island here. But not really going for the southwest. And Golda, I'm guessing the next welder... Once they're done getting these caretakers up... Well, actually, maybe not. They actually have no welders designed to go over to the southwest of the map. Just the Kodachi here, harassing, making the damage harder for any of these convicts to get out of the base. Because, again, much like thugs, convict shields don't do much against fire. So, not really all that effective. And, wow, that rogue. Brave or stupid, not sure which. Rogues do not regenerate health, so probably more stupid. At any rate, Dying Friend should be able to get in and deal a bit of damage to Gold's Commander. There's not really much defending it. I mean, this... The Ogre... Gonna be of some use, but the Rogue's already there to deal with it. The Thug... Should be able to just punch through. I mean... Yeah, it hits the shields and all, and... Does go through the shield somewhat. But again, the Rogue's right there. So, you know, kite around. Maybe get a few more Rogues in, too, though. That is clearly the plan. We do have a few Rogues in the queue. So, it should be okay. Nope, no, Dying Frame wants to go in. Wants to hit the Thugs attack. This is maybe not the best idea. Thugs do get hit by splash damage. Camera. Thugs do get hit by splash damage. As we can see, that's the thing about Ogres. They do deal with the Thugs. I was really only saying that was a halfway decent idea because of the Rogue, not because of the Thugs. So, good thing in my goal to, to get those Ogres in there just to completely wipe out everything they've been otherwise built. Dying Frame's commander, however, should be able to get rid of the... Yeah, was, yep, the Kodachi's going down. Cannot go fast in water, will die. And Time Friends doesn't have to worry about any burning metal extractors. 
And they're in a position to assault this Lotus, although that... What are you doing, Diamond Throne? That is really dangerous. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Just get out of the Lotus range. I think they saw that second Lotus and then turned back, because that first Lotus, though, I don't, I don't see them getting through that. That was 800 damage, just going in and out in the range. Now, with Diamond Throne using a little pea shooter on their commander, I don't see that having done much damage. Not enough damage to be able to get rid of the Lotus in time. Yeah, they'll run another six seconds on top of the other five or six seconds that already passed. I mean, it might the commander might have survived, but it would have been a very, very difficult fight. Now, what do we have here? Ah, lightning rifle. Good choice. Stun out the welder. Get in bad position. Then stun out the the lotus when stunned. Same time though, center of the map, ogres are coming in. But this is what I was talking about with the rogues. There are enough rogues to stop the ogres from being able to do their job. Still two more ogre, two more ogres left. But, again, we have the rogues. That sucks for the convict, though. We have the rogues and the felon, too. So, yeah, all the skirmishers. Just get rid of that ogre. And inside of Diamondfront's territory, too. So that's some good reclaim fodder. Diamondfront's command, on the other hand, just waiting for the, the picket to do his job. Get rid of the lotuses. But again, Diamondfront's commander could probably walk in there or jump in there and then lightning gun the lotuses down. But I don't blame them for not doing so. They might be concerned about the southwest side of the map, though. Gota has started to take that over. Dimefriend is not really aware of that. They're far more focused on just this little this little alcove between their base and Gota's. And, again, going with the Ogres, which are not going to be able to deal with the Felons or the Rogues too well. But there's got to be something else coming. No, just Ogres. No Minotaurs or anything planned at the moment. Dimefriend, on the other hand, getting some Racketeers into their mix, but... Basically the same unit composition going forward. And Dimefront is really playing this like this commander is just a constructor, using defenses as offenses. It's a common little thing to do when you're dealing with most builders, because most builders don't have weapons. But when you're dealing with commanders, that's less relevant. Still, though, works. Oh, okay. Get back to something that was mentioned about the Kodachi buff recently. Kodachis apparently have a lower, have lower reload speed, but they, they are more focused on burn damage than direct damage. Which is a bit of a buff against shields. Though, not that it really matters, the ogre's coming in here and wiping everything out. Yeah, that's Dimefroin just throws in the towel. Honestly, I think a little bit too soon. I mean, yeah, Gota's army was really strong, but Dimefroin was doing fine. I mean, they lost a bit of army and... Okay, their income was lower. I guess I can kind of see what they were doing. Yeah, no, I can understand. I mean, I think it might have been a little early, but the alternative would have been the Thunderbird just keeps coming in, wiping out their forces. Now I have to get Vandals on top of everything else. That, yeah, that makes sense. I can understand the logic there. Well, anyway, that was that. A lot shorter than I expected it would be. But we have more games. Another game going to be Google Frog and FFC on Trojan Hills. That I'm happy to see because Trojan Hills is always my favorite map. Or at least was. I haven't really played on it much recently. Good map, though. I mean, it's a bit controversial because it tends to favor Cloaky heavily. But we'll see what the players do. I'm actually really curious. And we'll find out in a couple of minutes.